Look at this car, the Phoenix, 1973, the epitome of the muscle cars. Does it get any better for you? No, it doesn't. You know, for me, driving this car was an experience. One of the things I really enjoyed when I drove it was, you know, sitting in the seat and looking over and seeing the green emblem, the sign of Trans Am. Now, how much work did you put into this car when you got it in your shop? When this one came in, it was in very nice, clean, straight shape, but just needed a lot of freshening up and stuff. It's uh, basically what's considered to be like an over-restoration, where you kind of over-detail a lot of aspects of the car. You know, all new, you know, bushings and uh, brake lines and fittings and, you know, you name it, everything's been gone through and stuff on this car from top to bottom. Inside to outside, it looked to be almost perfection. I feel like cars that drove off the lot in 1973, well, they weren't even as nice as this one. Condition on this, easily a one. Collectability, 1973, big horsepower, limited production, SD455, it has to be a B. Number, what's your prediction? 150 is what I have. This is one of 180 cars produced with the automatic transmission and the SD455 underneath the hood. And it being a full numbers matching car and in the overall condition that it's in, I feel that this car is worth definitely in that value, if not more. I take everything you say, I think it's all good, but I'll tell you, all I can feel, all I get to is a buck and a quarter. Well, you're really close, Keith. We're about 25 away, but you know, these cars, if you actually look up the Haggerty values and stuff on them right now, they're actually over 200K on this car, on a number one car. He's got some good facts, but you know what it comes down to? What happens on the auction block? Good luck. Thank you. The Trans Am roared up on the block and sold for $115,000. The Super Duty engine didn't give this Trans Am the boost we expected, with the hammer falling below both ours and Dave's estimates.